Jared Poland, fro knows photo.com. So back from South by Southwest, and this is a photo of the week as well as some concert shooting techniques that, that I'm going to share with you right now. Uh, so this picture was taken at South by Southwest at the Monster Energy Jam uh, with Cy and I, who I traveled down with opening the show. There were like six acts. They were playing first. They only were going to play five songs. And usually what happens during the early acts are the whoever's running the lights doesn't really go all out with the lights because they just they just don't for opening acts. So in this picture you have Walt on the left, you have Nick on the right playing his brand new guitar from his con- guitar company Perry Inc. Uh he's now producing his own guitars and they are for sale and they are pretty darn amazing. So this was the first major show where he was playing this guitar and the whole the whole thing I was going for was um capturing Nick playing this guitar because that was the whole idea here is he needed some great images of himself for publication for advertising for all different things to use images of him playing his own brand of guitar which is a really smart business move you know why not produce your own guitars if you can and then offer them up as these limited edition custom guitars so that's enough about you know the story here but we'll get into how I captured this a little bit so this was shot with the Nikon D3S. The lighting wasn't very good. We didn't have a sound check to check lights, and, and they, they, they got to do one song, but there was no lighting put on during sound check, so we couldn't really guess what it was going to, or we had to guess what it was going to look like when it was time to actually shoot the show. So I kind of had a feeling it was going to be pretty dark, so I shot the D3S up to 8,000 ISO. This shot was taken at 1 400th of a second, shot manually, f3.2 to give me a little bit of leeway with my focus. 800 ISO, 32 millimeters using the 24 to 72.8. And as you can see at the top of this image, I kept the top of the head or the neck or whatever that's called of the guitar in this picture, which is really, really important. Um, I like this framing, I like this composition. And, you know, Nick is just at the, like, the apex of his, uh, bending back to play his guitar. Uh, so this was, let's see, what else? Um, as you can see right here in the middle, you have a big flare coming in. Now, if you were shooting on anything but manual, your image would have looked like this. You know, because it would be exposing for the light in the background, and that's not what you want. You don't want the, camera to read these lights in the background that's why i shoot in manual i know i speak in my book the the uh how to capture images in low light situations about being an aperture priority that's when you're just starting out but when you get comfortable and you move into shooting manually this is what happens the reason i was at 400th of a second is because i wanted to freeze action the reason i was at 3 2 is to give me a little bit of leeway just in case my focus shifts or the or the you know artist moves slightly you know i want to have a little bit of leeway front to back with my aperture and using the 24 to 70 was because I wanted to get some action shots of Nick and not be uber duper tight this time. Uh, so that's why I was at 32 millimeters using the 24 to 70 2.8. Again, shooting at 800 ISO, 800, 8000 ISO is because I can in the D3S. You are fully capable of shooting this camera at 8000 and being very usable. As you can see here, before we even edit it, look how clean he is right here sure there's some noise and grain that's because it's a little underexposed right now but that is okay that's not a problem um this image is going to live as a black and white it really feels good as a black and white because it i've i've played with it and i'm going to do some tweaking of the raw file that i've never done personally before to actually use the fill light to make the image pop even more because you know that contrast goes to 100 blacks go to 100 but I would love for them to go even further because you know I can never have enough contrast in my photos so before I get to editing it what am I where am I focusing in this image let let's go into some education on you know what makes or how to shoot during a concert 
Uh, so here you can see I didn't get it. There's monitors that are actually right below Walt's knees that I didn't want in there. So I shot a little higher. I focused right on Nick. I focus on his face. I focus on his eye. That's what I was going for. And I locked through and I think I snapped off three or four or five different images of him you know, really locking in on this motion. What's great is Shane is back here on the drums. There's only three guys in the band. You got Walt here, Shane here, and Nick right here. So that's what I'm looking at. I'm constantly checking my frame to make sure I don't miss or cut anything off. In this case, I didn't cut off the top of the guitar. I cut off above the knee so it doesn't look awkward. Again, the exposure is one of the most important things here. Well, shooting raw is very important, too, because we can make the tweaks and make this image much better. Sure, it's, it's, it's okay now, but wait till you see where we finish this at. So when you're shooting a show, you, you're going to have to fight for position sometimes in the pit. And it so happened that I was shooting with Robert Knight in the pit. Uh, look him up if you've never heard of him. Amazing photographer, uh, shooting since the 60s, Jimi Hendrix stuff. You know, so he's been all around the world with any rock star. You name him, he shot him, and he's got a great, great documentary that you guys should look up. Um, and I can't remember the name for some reason right now. I'll put an annotation in here because I hear it's on Netflix. So, yeah, when you're shooting these shows, you got to get in position. You got to stake your claim, which is what I did. Um, I kind of had a feeling, you know, I actually didn't know Nick was going to do this. But I saw it start to happen, so I got over into position. I got there. I love the composition because they're equal on the left. They're equal on the right. Again, nothing's cut off. This is exactly how it's shot, and I'm very, very happy with this. So, so let's get into editing, editing this and making it black and white and showing you something that I've really never done in one of my images that I'm going to fully use in this photo. So I'm going black and white. I'm pumping my contrast up. So far, so good, right? What else am I changing? I'm going to go up in my exposure slightly for some reason. This is what I did. I played with this a little earlier, so I'm going to go there. And then I bumped my blacks to like 26. So, you know, right here this image is good. But I'm losing some detail in this area. The, the guitar, I'm losing detail. The truss up here, I'm losing detail. Walt's pants, I'm losing detail. Um, I didn't throw in any clarity yet, so let me just throw in some clarity for the time being. This is already a solid image. I haven't done very much to it, and just going black and white, you know, here's the color. You can see how it's blown out, underexposed, and bam, black and white. Look how solid it becomes and how much of a classic image it becomes. It just screams at you because color is too normal for me, or it's too normal. It's the, it's the norm anymore. But this black and white is solid. It gets rid of all the haze. It's just really awesome. And I love this flare right here. But he's still they're still exposed properly, all because I was shooting manual. Now let's do that thing that I've never done before in one of my own images. And that's go nuts with the fill light. I wanted to see what would happen here uh, if I use the fill light and pump up my black levels. So the fill light... You know, we're going to be right here, 68. Look what happens. So you start to get grain. It brings out a little more of the image. Uh, but, yeah, it looks terrible like this, right? But what are we going to do to make this go pop? Hello, I just went pop with the blacks. What happened here? All right. We're going to go back before the fill light where I touched the clarity. Watch the guitar. See how the blacks, see how the, 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 the colors around here or the white around here go away now we added the fill light look how it pops look up in the truss right up here it's hidden now it's brought out look at Walt's pants and shirt and face it's gone and now it brings it back right here so it really didn't introduce too much noise or grain that wouldn't have been there so now we're zoomed in this is where it was it's still noisy still grainy and this is where we went, and it really didn't introduce too much that I am not happy with. But what it did is it opened up the image. There it's closed, and there it's open. So what I had to do there is I pumped up my fill light and then compensated to bring my contrast back by pumping up my black levels. Yeah, so, yeah, I'm really into this right now, you know. It was a lot of fun to, to, to figure this out. Um, Adam Lerner, buddy of mine, suggested that I throw some fill light in. I don't know if he suggested that I do what I just did, but I'm, I think this image is there. This is where it started. 
this is where it's at now. This is a classic, thick black and white that transcends time in my mind. And utilizing the raw file, Adobe Lightroom here right now, and utilizing the fill light, which I've never used really in my own work, did something different. Because this image is closed. As you can, what I mean by closed is it's very dark in these areas. It's very dark. It, 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 it lacks some just, I don't know, some something. And then the fill light just opened it up. It just opened up the image to make it even better in my mind. Yeah. I mean, cause there's Nick's face, you know, the highlights in the hair. It just now looks more dimensional. So that's trying something new. That's, you know, answering the question that a lot of people ask me all the time or say that I don't use enough of the, of the of the the tools that photo uh, sorry that Lightroom gives me well here I just did it I used the used the fill light for the really the first time here uh, in my own image and it worked so you know it took some tweaking took some messing around took took some fooling around but I got there and this is the final image and this is one of those images that you get that really I think is one of my stronger images that I've ever taken of a live show and you know I couldn't have done it obviously without the D3S because no other camera even the D3 wouldn't have done this uh, the D3S did it um, a feel for the musicians helped knowing knowing how these guys act helps knowing what Nick is going to do when he goes into his into his rock stance allows me to know where to focus and it just came together with Walt in the right place Nick in the right place and Shane in the background some tweaking of the raw file and there we have it so I hope this gives you some insight into what's going through my mind where I'm focusing why I'm shooting manual what my settings are uh, for when you are shooting a concert and how I edited the file and experimented a little bit with the fill light so that's what I got that is the photo of the week as well as some some inside information on shooting shows Jared Poland fro knows photo.com. See ya!